Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of e commerce documentation. We're here with another special guest. We've got AB from Toronto. Hey, man, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Really, and I'm mean, looking forward to talk to you. Of course, man, of course. So, we got connected through some Facebook groups and email marketing. Tell everybody a little bit about what you do uh, with your company. Yeah, so we like to call ourselves as a communication agency. So, and we focus on communicating with the, you know, the users of DTC e-commerce brands via email, SMS, and pop-ups. So what, as a communication agency, I mean that we do the strategy of what to communicate, when to communicate, and how to communicate. We believe that communication is the key. Communication is the reason that we human beings have evolved to, you know, being the best, you know, whatever animal or whatever you create in a call in the world right because we can communicate much better than compared to any other animals so uh, that's why we are focusing on communicating the right message to the right person at the right time because for a brand also it becomes very essential is how they talk to their customers right that is something that other people cannot copy they can copy their products they can copy a lot of other things they cannot copy the customer support and they cannot copy the communication so we are an agency with like currently we have aging people across the globe full-time experts and as uh, already told we help dtc brands with email sms and pop-ups improve their revenue make them profitable give them more profits and build a sustainable and very good relationship with their subscribers and customers so that they stand out in this crowded market Love that, AB. So did you say you have 18 yeah. brands that you're working no, with? No, full-time employees? employees. 18 employees. 18 employees. So yeah. how many brands are you working with? Uh, not a lot. Close to 30 because we don't like to work. Like we are looking at quantity compared to uh, not. We're looking at quality compared to quantity. So right. because right. Uh, when you craft a strategy unique for a brand, you need really a lot of hours that you put in to create a custom strategy for a brand. It's easy to copy paste the templates, but it's hard to actually right, right. come up with the strategy. So, you know, there's a lot more brainstorming happening within the team for a particular brand compared to probably other, I do not know, maybe who are on quantity. So we are on the quality side of things. So what, and, and people think, you know, sending emails, right? Like you're just you're copying, pasting, blasting, and, there's a lot more to it with segmentation, everything else. So can you tell us like, what do brands get wrong? What are they not doing? What do you help them do specifically that drives revenue for the brand? Yeah. See, blasting emails was okay three years ago. When I started four years ago, right. uh, I was blasting emails and it was making money. Okay. Uh -huh. Like FOMO, the, or the, the, you know, the offer is expiring in two hours. Some, you know, those kind of, you know, uh, marketing urgency, tech, yeah. urgency based right. and there was no copy there's just this timers and stuff and it was making money i made a lot of money okay for our customers using those strategies but now everybody's doing the same right so as a consumer i know these are just gimmick i know that this is not going to expire right. right i know the truth right so i know these people are faking it the moment I see an email from somebody, like click spend support, a win, or, yeah, oh, it, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like the offer they are showing, like forty percent, fifty percent. I'm never gonna get it. I know that it's like fake, right? So, right, right. I, I know it. So it, because it's so common. So you know what? Uh, so so like like you know like the so brand, consumers are not basically you know like engaging or feeling good with the brand. They're not deeply involved. They're not loyal. They're like, hey, I like the product. And they're looking at cheaper, you know, cheaper options. They are not like looking at brands. And that's where brand is missing an opportunity to get a customer for a long term. Okay. So they have to stand out. They have to talk in a way that is more human, right? That that yeah. would make, make people feel like they're talking to not, not a brand, but basically somebody in the brand. So we use you know uh, avatars like you know somebody from the brand and uh, talking to the person sending emails like hey how is your day going i'm having a coffee uh, in my office so how's how's monday for you just four or five lines tell me people reply to those emails 
people like hey i'm having this i'm taking my daughter to you know drop in the school or you know people across the world they like someone's going to bed or something like that okay so those kind of things right. actually connect with audiences because that is different you're not selling something oh, sure. you are not doing you know like you are not pushing a sales you're not asking them to do anything they say hey what are you doing you may want to you if you want you reply if you don't want don't reply nothing is at stake but people feel really connected right hey man this is different right this is a different feel no brand yes. brand yes yes just four or five lines of copy and put some grammatical mistakes don't make it like a completely 100% you know grammatically proper put some mistakes put a comma out there make a spelling mistake make it look like somebody really typed it out Okay. Who's the guy Neville? He says, "Yeah, don't use proper grammar always." Yes. And he'll he'll he's made millions sending these emails yes. like, "Hey, what R, letter R you up to? Like letter U?" And I'm going, "This is so silly." But he's like millions of dollars in sales doing that. Mm -hmm. And then if people reply going, "You made a mistake in your email," that actually helps your inbox delivery. Yes. Right. Exactly. They like to see people replying to you. So I I like this. No, this is good. Yeah. So that's what we do here. Okay. We always try to do strategies execute them in a way that would differentiate this brand from the crowd now a brand yeah. would not think about they would think of putting pictures pretty pictures of the products a sale 10% off blah 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 make it look good that doesn't look it's so overdone yes. yeah yes yes and people know if you're giving me 10 or 20% off you've marked it up to mark it down right <laughs> yeah I, I, consumers are pretty savvy i mean People even subscribe to your email list to wait for the abandoned cart email. So they'll go add it to cart, wait to get another 15, 20. And I'm going, so it's just, it's, we're dealing with, you're right, more sophisticated consumers who don't want just a brand. They want a guy or gal or someone that they can associate with the brand. Exactly. Now, I like that. So what would you say to a brand who doesn't want to have I guess a spokesperson or a face of the brand, what should they do? Cause like a lot of the premium brands that I'm thinking of right now in my head, right. In fashion and even in retail, you know, they use models to a certain degree, but a lot of them, you can't really put a face you to the brand. You don't have to put a face on the signature. You don't have to put a face if you can't afford to do that. Okay. What you need to, you need to fake up, come up with somebody like customer happiness, officer some some kind of something if they are yeah, okay yeah. with that that's that really works i know i have worked with brands that are like hey we can't put pictures of our employees out there they would leave the job blah 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 so many complications right so can you can you fake it to make it if they say yes it's fine if no if no we use some other strategies which is like quiz okay so we do quiz okay so we tell brands with like th the idea is to look different in in term in, in like for your audience like hey this is a brand that sends really different kind of emails all of the brands are sending me discounts and promos but this guy they sending me a quiz asking me about fashion hey how much do you know about fashion take our quiz three questions only okay so three questions only okay go to a type form uh, i just posted this thing on linkedin today uh, we do it a lot of times with some of the brands use Type form, very simple to use, doesn't cost you a lot mm -hmm. of money, right? And oh, yeah. and build a quiz out there with just three questions, very easy questions. We are not trying to find a genius in our subscribers. We're trying to entertain them, make them feel like, hey, I want this quiz. I, I you know, like, and, and let them answer three questions, multiple choice questions, okay, like three questions, check, check, check. Show them the score. If they, if they scored one, show them one out of three. Have a, such a good copy that would cheer them up. Hey, no worries. Better luck next time. This happens. Here is our 5%, 10% off code. Whenever you want, you can use it to make a purchase. So they, they really got the thrill of actually participating in a quiz. Even if they fail, the copy is made in such a way which to un encourage them, make it you know feel like nothing. Okay, it's fine. And then also give them a discount code to go and buy whenever they need to. No pressure. Okay, so that creates a different kind of impression in the mind of the subscriber. Okay, then compared to somebody just saying, hey, 5% off, go buy, and these are our products. Now this person will remember this quiz, this kind of an you know engagement for a longer period of time. They may even talk about this when they meet with their friends, colleagues, or something. So the brand gets word of mouth publicity. 
Right. So, so I think asking questions right. and building relationships with your subscribers is important. And there are many ways to do that, uh, multiple ways. So a brand should focus on trying to get those, you know, like think out of the box and create that mm -hmm. customer consumer engagement. Ask them as, as much as possible. Keep asking questions. How's your shopping experience? Okay, let us know. And make it easy for them. The more you make it easy for them, the more people are going to participate because nobody has time. Nobody has time, right? Honestly, right? Everybody is busy. Okay, so we try to make the journey as easy, as, as smooth as possible and always make your customers feel like they're the winners. Always make them feel they are winning. Okay, appreciate them a lot. When you write a copy, so you have to write in a way which will make them feel like, hey, this company is for you. You are the reason we exist. Okay. So uh, tell us how you feel today. Tell us how the shopping experience was. We are eager to hear. Then people will share their feedback without any bias. They are not sharing it for a 10% discount code. Nobody knew when they took the quiz that they'll get a discount code. People took it because right. it seemed interesting. To surprise them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's yeah, like what that. that's how we think. And that's why we work with less number of brands. Because it does take a lot of time to think and execute. Oh, there's so much. There's so much in that of coming up with the strategy, right? Ideation and then implementation of all that, right? right. Uh, that's a huge. No, that's that's great, AB. Um, and you're right. I I, I like what you said. You got to differentiate your brand in the marketplace from the competitors. And those are some great ways that, that people can do that. So no, I really like that. And then just to kind of piggyback on what you said, I mean, there's some tools out there like um, Octane AI yeah. quiz tools where people can, and it's, it's pretty slick because the questions and the data points that users input, those fields tie in directly into Clavio. Yes. So then you can pull segments and recommend products based on how people answered those quiz questions, right? Exactly. And I'm sure that's what you're doing with Typeform too. So mm -hmm. it's actually not just collecting information for information's sake. It's a better experience because then you can recommend more relevant products to the consumer and they go, this brand gets me. Yes, exactly. And it turns into revenue, right? So yes. Without, coming, coming full circle on that. Exactly. So we just generated $20,000 using a quiz funnel for a brand. Three questions, $20,000 of revenue. It was not a sale. So how does that work? Walk us through how the quiz funnel works. You're driving traffic from email to the quiz. Yeah. You set up the quiz. Like walk us through how this works. So, so we select a segment. So we are very high on data and we do a lot of segmentation. So we segment, select a segment of people whom we want to target, who are, let's say, uh, being very passive to the discounts. They are seeing discounts. They're not interacting with it. Okay. But they have purchased the product previously, maybe three, four, six months ago. They have purchased the product, but now they are not actually engaging. So we took that segment of people. We created a quiz in the niche. It has to be for that niche. Okay. Uh, and then once we created the uh, quiz, what we did, did was we had five questions. Two questions, we put it up on the email. The question, the answer, question, the answer to just, you know, make them feel like, okay, this is going to be easy. This is going to be interesting. So that it's like a teaser trailer and say, hey, do you want to take this three more questions? Okay. When we added that email address to the URL. So when they go to type form, they don't have to fill the name or email. It's automatically gets captured because it's in the URL. It's like a parameter. Kind like of thing. Yeah. 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 So they don't have to fill the, you know, nobody wants to fill email name, phone number again and again and again. So, so you're appending their email to the yes. URL string yeah. and then yes. type forms pulling that in. So, yeah. you know, John Smith answered this way yes. and then that feeds back into Clavio. Yes. Oh, beautiful. So that, that's what we did. And then we had three questions, very simple. I mean, those questions, So as I told you, we are not trying to find the brightest subscriber. We, that's not the goal of the quiz. It's not an exam. It is just to entertain them, make them feel they're winning. So three questions, the probabilities are someone will score one, two, or three. For each of that, we had different discount codes and different messaging, like encouraging. If someone is winning, wow awesome you are like einstein level blah 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 okay right, right, right. okay and this is a gift from us because you won 
Okay, and if someone is one, two different messaging, and hey, no worries, we have something to cheer you up. So whenever you need, right. go and make a purchase. We didn't say expires in 10 hours, 20. No, no, it does not expire. The code does not expire. Okay, it's up to you. You, We gave them the power of choice. We did not you know, push them. We gave them like, hey, chill, man. You, If you want to buy, you buy. If not, that's fine. Right. Within three to four days, we saw a revenue of $20,000 on that particular campaign. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful. Yes. So that's and, the power what, of community. How yeah. did you drive? Was it integrated with the website? Did you send emails to the quiz? Yeah. Did you have paid traffic going there? So we sent a campaign. That we created a segment of people. We send them this campaign. It's like an email. Okay, just an email. Two questions, five questions were there. Three were on the type form. Two questions with answers were on the email to give them a teaser, a trailer, kind of thing like what can they expect in the quiz? So that we only get people who are highly motivated. Our com- completion rate was 92.7 or something percentage. So out of every 100 people, 92 people completed the entire quiz. Okay, so that's a pretty high completion rate because people drop off, right? It, it only happened because on the email we sent to them, we mentioned the question, the first two questions out of five and the answers to see if they could understand whether this is a quiz they can take or not take. So they, they didn't go there blindly. They went with some knowledge about what they can expect in the quiz. Okay. And we made it interesting and we made it very easy. No email, no phone number, no name, nothing. We no, need no details from you. Go three pages, fourth page, show the score, show the discount code, done. If they want, they buy. If they don't want, they don't buy. But they go away with a very good experience. They go with feeling happier okay then they were so it was it was the like sending a campaign to already subscribers like people who already subscribe to us i like it so this is something i've kind of wondered how do you how do you come up with like you know campaigns to send you know weekly to your audiences right like it's a very creative task right and i see brands who do it really well and i'm like Man, whoever came up with this, like Taco Tuesday, 10% off. I mean, some of it's kind of a stretch, right? Uh, But obviously through the holidays, there's a lot of natural events, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, December discounts, stuff like that, right? Uh, How do you come up with all these campaigns to to send out on a weekly basis or email specifically? Yeah, that's where it takes time because then you really think deep, (laughs) try to like, like we had a brand we did uh, for a month. Every day, it was a big brand, very big cosmetics brand, doing some $3 million a month, $3 million a month. So it was a big brand uh, we were working with. So every day they had sales of, you know, lipsticks and stuff. So every day we were sending like Monday this, Tuesday this, so a color for each day of the week, uh, shades. Okay. And that nice. did really good. Okay. So this is all a part of the brainstorming process that we do. So we brain dump everything on a whiteboard and then we look at it after a while like and pick up the best ideas that we have as a team and see and then run it through the client to see if they are okay with that. Okay, and if they are okay, then we you know execute it. We like put like a to-do. Okay, if we need to execute this, we need a type form. We need this, we need that. We also use Octane. AI, uh, I love Octane AI, but not all brands want to move to a tool, you know, like, you know, brands have their, you know, like they just don't want to, to go there. So right. in, in that right. case, we use Typeform. Okay, so. It's a pretty robust tool yes. that can do a lot of things. Yeah. A little more manual on the setup, but yeah, no, I like Typeform. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so this and then is. What, a, you're, mm-hmm. You guys are doing SMS along with email, right? Yes, yes. So. Talk to me about SMS. What the hell is going on? Is it working? I mean, everybody claims 99% open rates, um, but the click-through rates and the conversion rates, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those, I, in my opinion, and I'll let you talk. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to out talk you here, but it's one of those, look, it's a good channel. It's a good assist in the conversion, but it's not the thing that really drives the touchdown, if you will, right? Um it's not it's not the hero it's a great assistant and and it's a good touch in the buyer's journey uh, see sometimes uh people uh, say it's like 
either they make it look like it's the hero of the entire e-commerce story or they make it look like the villain i would say it's like a supporting actor to the entire thing and a pretty exactly. pretty solid supporting act why i'll tell you because first is people who are giving you you the phone number have higher intent nobody gives you the phone number right they can give their email address they won't give your phone number if they don't have the higher intent so any subscriber you have on your phone on the sms thing list is a high intent okay subscriber first thing second yeah true you, yeah so the open rates are higher because everybody is offline you don't have to co- be connected to you know the online thing like email if you don't have internet you don't get emails but on the phone if there is network you get it right you don't need the internet stable right. yeah so so what happens you send a message it reaches the inbox instantly right at that time it reaches and the crowd is less it's less noisy okay if it was as noisy as email people the open rates will go down you're lost in the inbox yeah, right? yeah 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 but it's still like okay you know it's still a pretty uh, you know like a safe place for people to see what pe- yeah, other yeah. people are sending secondly is conversational so it's very dynamic like you could build this one to one thing it could be like a bot or it could be a customer agent, agent sitting somewhere behind that and chatting with you so it's like more real time it's like Uh, whatsapp facebook things like that hey do you want to get uh, do, do do you want to know about our sale today type 1 type 2 so they type 1 they get different response so you build that one to one chat kind of interaction which is again really good so if brands can leverage that they could really build this kind of quizzes and you know all those kind of things on sms also and so that's the power of sms is that first it gets into your device which is always accessible you don't need an internet less you know like less crowded so you get more visibility third you could really build that one to one kind of a communication channel okay that would and if a brand can do that it's a really a positive experience for the you know recipient for the person who is actually interacting with the brand so you have to really put in not all the brands want to do this kind of one to one interaction they are more like hey i have your phone number i'm going to send you a 20% off discount code and you want to sell sell discount yeah, buy, yeah, buy, yeah. Buy. yeah yeah so they are going to fail in the long term they are okay now they're doing some you know like some earning some money but and in the long term they're going to really fail because people would be like this is not interesting people need interesting stuff in their life people are quitting their jobs they don't worry about that they just want to do something interesting in life right and if you as a brand yeah. are not making them feel interesting exciting you would be lost right They're like i Especially will not look younger, into it. Yeah. yes yes yeah. the, the younger audience yeah. right no, they, they they always yeah. knew something so money is rising is, up with yeah. all the buying power yep. <laughs> yes yeah. money is less of a concern now if you think about it compared to our parents you know like 20 30 40 years ago we have more access to money freelancing geeks work for 4 hours 5 hours a day and you can have a good life rest of the day go climb a hill or whatever hell you want to do exactly. do right so excitement so a brand has to bring that level of excitement to their audience and that's where they need people who can create those strategies that would make them stand out in the crowd now many people might not love that <laughs> yeah no seriously i mean a lot of people get caught up in automation where hey everything's automated it's it's hmm. sending these you know in emails like most of its flows right yeah, yeah, yeah. uh abandoned cart sequences automated drip sequences but even on sms with a lot of the big platforms it's same kind of thing automated sequences discounts funnels to get them to buy but you're saying you should have somebody from the brand receiving those and make it more conversational yes. as to hey who who wants a discount code today don't just hey here's a sale 10% off yes. here's the code hey who wants a discount code today to get a new whatever mm-hmm. insert niche here right kind of thing mm-hmm. exactly that would make them so it's worth it so yeah. brand should invest in that yes. like you said with the email earlier hey what's happening today what are you guys up to right make it fun exciting social not just yes strictly product and and sale based yeah people like to buy from people right that's the end of it right people like to buy from people you would buy from your friend compared to somebody unknown right so if i be your friend you would basic may have some transaction with me right some like that's the thing right 
I have to be your friend. The moment I become your friend, possibilities are limitless. I can say, hey, friend, can you help me get two more customers in a different way? And you would be like, hey, why not? You know, let me talk in my friend circle. Let me talk to my colleagues and let, let me give you referrals. People talk about loyalty. People talk about having a referral program. Those are tools. Those are just tools. You need to know right. how, how to use it, right? Those tools are not going to use themselves up. You as a brand owner need to talk to people and find out how can you best use those referral tools, right? So what I'm trying to say right. is that we created $20,000 using Typeform. We didn't need Octane AI. It is great. We use it. But it, was that a roadblocker? No. It is always the strategy. It's always the communication that wins. People were winning before internet came in right ugly and all those great advertisers were they born in the times of facebook and digital marketing no they were there right when nothing this nothing started okay and they created great campaigns on tv right on television like which could really yes yes so it's a brilliant ad campaigns yeah 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 so that's why i say that's well, that, yeah. that's why i say that we are a communications agency if tomorrow email and sms go away we are still here because we know how to communicate with people right maybe something else comes up maybe it's 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 uh, Jacques, you know this vr metaverse thing maybe that in five years time that becomes a big thing we will still be here as zoranto because we know how to communicate just the channel has changed but the people have not we understand people and we need to communicate so that's the power that every brand should go and unlock to differentiate themselves now and in for the future also so to- i love it man no, it's <laughs> great it's not the tool, it's the people, right? Yes. If you had an office full of computers, the best computer equipment you could buy, you had 20 workstations, world-class equipment, but you have no people to run it, you got nothing, right. zero. Right, exactly. So, um, two of my favorite lines, and I'll ask you what your favorite lines are. You brought up David Ogilvy, and then kind of taglines and communication. Steve Jobs, the iPod, what was it, 10,000 songs in your pocket? Yes. One of my favorites. Yeah. That was brilliant encapsulates everything right hmm. and then david ogilvy who's like you know the godfather of advertising right hmm. his campaign with rolls royce it was in print and it said the loudest thing that you'll hear in a rolls royce driving down the highway is the clock in the car yeah i was like yeah. that that sums it up right like yes. enough said exactly what, what are your favorite uh, what are your favorite lines there's stuff you've done for clients uh, that clients. sums up you know I can send you some, but I can't remember it top of the mind right now. No, it's okay. I mean, like, uh, I am sometimes bad at that because I am more of like strategy guy. And we have copywriters who write those specific copies for those kind of things. Okay, and we always love that punchline kind of thing. One line, like one ring to rule them all, if you know. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. it's like one yeah. line, one catchphrase that punchy, is, like, yeah, the punchy. Quick. Yes, yeah. because yeah. nobody has time to read a novel route, <laughs> like a paragraph of thing. Right. It has to be punchy. And there has to be different campaigns also. If you just send the same thing again and again, people get bored. Like, dude, this is like, you know, give them, refresh them. Okay. Tell, give them something new. Oh, wow. Oh my God. This is like something different, dude. Right. Uh, so you got to create those kind of, you know, soft like soccer okay sometimes change the from name what we did was we you know the from name like mm. a brand okay just send something else maybe a celebrity name maybe something that's happening in the event like you know like a meme kind of thing put that there okay and people like who's this okay and like they're gonna like if it's interesting they're gonna open it and they're like oh this is from this brand so they're like they'll have this happy moment okay okay and that's when you get real users so you know uh it takes time for you to really win somebody Okay, and you're gonna try a different way to make the people, you know, like it should be interesting. Like they should be looking forward to your email. Like, hey, what's the next email gonna be? Right? That if if a brand does that, reaches that level of, you know, like interest in terms of their subscribers, they would their LTV would be probably the highest. Like you know, the lifetime value of the customers would be the highest among in, in the entire industry because they are winning their hearts and minds of their customers right so that's it no i love that man <laughs> you have a lot to talk it seems <laughs> okay no no keep going this is great so w- one of the things kind of just uh you know my own personal bias or or pet peeve if you will is like 
you know, you get on a website for the first time in the e-commerce DTC space, right? Let's say they're selling shoes and they immediately hit me with a pop-up of 20% off if you sign up right now. And I'm going, I don't know you. I just got on this website. I just want to look around. I'm not ready yet mm -hmm. uh, to do anything, but I appreciate it. You know, it's one of those in the buyer's journey here. Mm -hmm. I'm still just looking and investigating. I haven't got to a potential purchase decision of, okay, I want to buy shoes. What mm -hmm. shoes am I going to buy? What do I need? Are mm -hmm. they outdoor? Are they indoor? Are they dressy? Are they casual? Mm -hmm. uh, those types of things before I get to what is the right size in this new shoe brand, right? That would be bottom of funnel. I'm about ready to purchase. What are you seeing? What are you doing? How, you know, uh, let me start with this. Do pop-ups work? Yeah, pop-ups work. Pop-ups do okay. work. You need to know how Good. to do that. We're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, it, it does work, definitely. We have seen opt-in as high as 30% on pop-ups for a brand. Wow. 30% is high. We have seen we generated around $2.3 million in just 37 days for a cosmetics brand using pop-ups and a welcome email series. Okay, they, it, it, it was just join our family. Okay, walk part, us through that. Yeah, like, it, it was simple. Walk us through that. See, pop-up is all about the message you send, as you told. See, when you are in a mm -hmm. customer's journey, everything should add to your journey. It should be relevant to your, you know, that the phase you are. Okay, you are in a research phase. It should, you know, it should make you feel like, oh, this is great. This pop-up came, it solved a problem for me, right? It inspired me. It should not be a deal breaker. It should be a deal maker for you. Okay, that's how you have to think about it. Easiest way to do that is 20%, 30%. You are a VIP, blah, blah, blah. That's deal breaker. It takes away your attention. It makes a bad customer experience. You get irritated. Okay, instead of that, if I put something in that, for example, if you're in the cosmetics and, you, and, and the cosmetics brand is being led by a founder who is very visible, like he's like a leader, right? Okay, so you'll be like, hey, hey, gals, want to join my army? Okay, then that connects. Want to join my family? Okay, hey, gals, want to join my family? Founder's picture. Then what happened? They are, the, most of the cold audience is coming because they know the founder. The founder is famous. For example, just an example. Now, I am, what I'm trying is making these girls because they look up to this guy, you know, the lady. I'm telling them, do you want to join the family? That's the pop-up. So they get excited. Right, who wouldn't want to join? Yeah, right, yeah, right. because they look up to the person. So you have to find that nuances of a brand. You have to think deeper, okay? Uh, like if it's a running shoes like Adidas or Nike, do you want to be the best athlete? Do you want to feel like the best athlete? Yes, no. That would make you feel more connected to the pop -up, rather than, hey, dude, here is the 20%, take it or leave it kind of thing, right? That does not... You're not selling shoes. It's yeah. not a product. Yes. You're selling, right? It's athleticism. Yes. It's being the best. It's being like, you know, so the celebrities or the other athletes you like. There is this book called Start With Why. You might know about it. It's like a famous book, Start With Why. So you should, that works actually. People might, you know, I have heard people saying it's garbage and stuff, but no, there has to be a why. No, you, need, yeah. you, you need to know why the customers are coming to your store. Why? If you find that why, then you can create the entire customer journey in such a way, in such a compelling way. People will appreciate you for, share, for the pop-up. Because it's, it is adding on to their experience, right? It is adding on to their why. It is guiding them. Another thing is you can use quizzes. What happens if you walk into a store, a retail store, there's somebody most of the times, hey, sir, how are you? How's the morning? How can I help you? You're like, dude, okay, I have somebody who can help me find the right shoe for me. Then you ask questions, right? And they help you take you to the right place in the entire building. Right. This is the shoe. This is the colors, blah, blah. You're so feeling Ah, oh, I'm so happy. There was somebody who found the perfect zoo for me. I didn't have to do the legwork of trying to do it all by myself. Right. That is right. a missing piece when you buy online. Anything, shoes, clothes, jewelry, anything. You're like, cosmetics, is this sale going to work for me? What you have to do, you have to, you know, substitute the pop-up with a quiz. Okay. Like, hey, can I help you buy your shoes? You're like, okay, yeah, let me give it a try. Okay, no risk or nothing. Ask you a couple of questions. Make it a bit more fun. Don't be just a robotic thing. Like, you know, ask questions, ask questions. Or in, in, in one of the states, ask a question like, make hey, yeah. yeah, yeah, make it fun. Like, just put a meme or something that related to your industry or something so that they, you know, they have happiness, you know, like somebody talking to them. 
and then guide them through that and then show them products that are relevant to them okay and then say hey if you want to buy it you can buy it now here is 20 percent off or you can give me your email address and i'm gonna keep you like keep you in the loop or something like that so what happens you feel like giving your email if you still are not convinced okay so you give so so i guided you through like gave you the options that matches your preference because you were you know on the quiz funnel and then i showed you the products and then i'm asking for an email very nicely giving you a very solid reason of why you should give your email or phone to me so the intent is higher customer satisfaction experience is through the roof you will remember this brand even if you do not buy from it because this brand stood out to you it it gave you a great five minutes of experience which will probably make your dull day happier maybe you know like <laughs> so yeah 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 so so, so that, that those are the strategies you use to get a 30 percent opt-in rate yes, not the, yeah, yeah i mean what's what's an average opt-in rate uh for us it has been 12 to 15 percent each that seems high because i've what i've heard is a lot lower than that yeah because everybody like does the same thing because yeah 10%, 20%, yeah right? yeah so if you do that people already know that's bs right i'm not going to engage with that it's a distraction so you have to do some level of why finding the why and putting it out using a copy the punchy line okay the punchy line with the right picture one pop-up for desktop one for the mobile different layouts right. okay don't let the pop-up apps decide to you know resize it you do it yourself you take con control of yeah yeah, yeah 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 good. yeah you take the control do that so it i think uh a brand needs to really invest at this time to be able to you know move forward because now the you know the, the world financial you know it's it's in a crisis right now every country is facing problems in terms of you know after the corona thing so every brand should invest in making sure that they are keeping their customers for as long as possible and it's it is only possible if you differentiate yourself these are high cost because you can pay somebody $500 and they will create all the flows in the world for you for $500 to be honest okay but this this stuff that if a brand can do it's i think worth it's just a different feel right uh, i mean i get excited when i talk about this because i really love to do a yeah yeah create those kind of communication that will touch your heart keep you like refresh so you come to a website and you should feel feel energetic right and like it should give you some vibe uh, so and that's what big brands do also if you look at this their entire you know like customer journey everything is created in a way to inspire you okay to 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 cheer you up okay and to make you remember them for as long as possible so it's not sales will happen by product if the customer is a person is happy they're going to buy from you today tomorrow whenever they need they're going to remember uh, you and that's what we need for a brand and at mostly at this time like this is a time when many e-commerce stores will close down it has been like face, yeah. facebook problem email problem oh yeah yeah and the you know the this thing so many stores are closing down and it's very hard for people because e-commerce is a very cash intensive business, right? So if you are always looking for quick money, quick money, and you don't get the quick money, then you are like <laughs> dead. So. Yeah, it's, you're exactly right. It's cash intensive. You've got to buy inventory. There's lead times, there's ad costs, there's refunds. There, there's so much to it. There's warehouse storage costs. Yeah. I mean, it's Amazon ad fees. If you're selling on Amazon, yeah. all the different Shopify apps, you've got a Klaviyo. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, there, it's not easy money anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of brands are going out of business and I, I, I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of new entrants slow down yes. because people are not launching new e-com stores right now. Yes, exactly. Because it's not easy anymore, as I told. It's not easy. No, no. <laughs> All, right. All right, sweet. AB, thank you so much for coming on, man. Where can people learn more about you? Uh, yeah, go to my website, Zoronto, Z-O-R-O-N-T-O dot com, Zoronto dot com. Or you can follow me on uh, LinkedIn, Abhishek, A-B-H-I-S-H-E-K space P-A-T-R-A. So on LinkedIn, I said a lot of content and uh, all the strategies that we use to, you know, improve our client's revenue. So you could copy paste the strategies if you want to. And, you know, you talk to me there. Cool. I'll link that down in the show notes. Thanks again, brother. Appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot.